This is a very good question. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't think we have numbers about the, the size of the industry where we're technical guys. Um, but what I can tell you is that uh, nowadays computers are everywhere and this is why we are uh, also interested in hardware hacking and this is why uh, uh, you know, events such as hardware.io are very important nowadays. Uh, because when you look at the automotive industry, for example, we realize that nowadays every car is essentially a computer running on four wheels. So as long as computers can be hacked, uh, then cars can be hacked as well. So this is why I think it's, very, it's a very good idea and a very good opportunity for us as security researchers to stay in touch with the hardware industry and with the hardware experts and to make sure that these uh, connected devices that will be omnipresent in the future are going to be secure. And when you look at, for example, the, from the economic side of the whole industry, it might not really, uh, uh, I don't know, be the biggest when it comes to security, but it's an emerging market and it definitely intersects itself the, with the whole physical security part of the whole industry. So when you think about the price of a human life, that's, it's something that you can't really put a, a, a number on. So I think that it's incredibly important to have top-notch security when it comes to the automotive industry. And what we're about to show at hardware.io uh, will be on how to avoid uh, on having a the first car botnet, for example, if you watch the Fast and the Furious, their last one. So, Just a quick overview. I would uh, divide the attack vectors into two main categories. I would say there's uh, uh, attack vectors that require physical access and attack vectors that require a remote presence. So something like uh, connecting to the car through the internet or through uh, other communication uh, interfaces. Uh, and uh, uh, I think both of them are very dangerous. Actually, the proof of concept that we're going to be presenting is a, is a combination, is a mix of what can be achieved by an attacker uh, when he combines a little bit of physical access, like having physical access to the USB port, uh, plus a little bit of, you know, hacking and scripting and uh, remote access kind of, uh, kind of attacks. But when you think about it right now, uh, a lot of cars have Bluetooth and other kinds of wireless technology. And the interest right now isn't that big when it comes to auditing these kinds of system. So you never know what will come up in the future or how you're gonna find exploits from a couple of years ago, like Blueborn, for example, in modern computational systems that are embedded inside infotainment systems. For example, the first thing that comes into my mind is the whole, uh, how is it called? RDS? Yeah, the RDS system. Radio data system. Yeah, so that one called, uh, uh, transmits data packets over the airwaves and those packets are digitally decoded uh, on the uh, radio unit inside the car. And sometimes the chip vendors don't really think it's true and may pass malicious data to the ECU that could inject certain commands or crash, for example, the radio unit. You can crash the radio unit within some kind of malformed data packet. And that radio unit can crash the infotainment system as well in its turn. And actually, I might add that uh, a crash would be the best possible scenario <laughs> because a really malicious attacker would take that crash and develop a remote execution exploit based on it. If, uh, if the environment allows that. So uh, this is why, you know, sanitizing every input and, and trying to build security uh, on every level of, uh, of the roadmap of a hardware project is, uh, is something that we would like to see in an ideal world. And unfortunately, what we are seeing in the automotive world right now is that all of these systems are designed um, by engineers, by very good engineers, by very experienced engineers, but they are engineers that never designed the system that was connected. Because up until recently, these infotainment systems in cars were isolated for, from, the, from the environment. So the more, the more uh, uh, we try to connect them and the more uh, uh, connections they have, the more vulnerable they will be. It's a denial, 
but I would say it's uh, let's say a lack of uh, experience on some automaker uh, automotive uh, makers when it comes to security it's an area that some of them are still trying to understand and this is why we're uh, you know we're trying to take every opportunity such as uh, uh, the event that you're organizing to, uh, uh, you know, to spread the word and to and to raise awareness. And actually, I'm usually I'm a pessimistic person when it comes to security. I mean, I consider myself a realist, but uh, when you see how many bad things are happening, people look at you as a pessimist. But when it comes to the automotive industry, and I look at the history of the automotive industry, I see that they have a very good track record when it comes to physical security you know things such as airbags or uh, uh, stabilization functions of the car or uh, seat belts and all of these things are mandatory right when you buy a car uh, the law tells the manufacturer that they should do everything that's possible to ensure the physical safety of the passengers so uh, if we're implementing these physical safety measures by default in all cars, I see no, reasons, no reason why automotive makers wouldn't do the same thing with, uh, with the cybersecurity measures. Yeah, I think that right now they're not really uh, understanding on how a cyber attack could translate directly into a physical threat. You know, it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. So I don't think that we're going to get that much coverage until we're going to have the first real crash produced by a hack. Not any kind of bug or anything, but by a hack. Right now, we're basically trying to do baby steps. So we're trying to get out of our uh, uh, bubble. So when it comes to security, everybody nods to themselves and to their peers that all is... Uh, all code is vulnerable, we should invest more into security, but nobody is actively trying to go towards the vendor and go towards the field that you're trying to secure, like in this case, the automotive industry, and actually try to uh, uh, go to auto shows and get in touch with vendors over there and present to them uh, what's working and what is not working when it comes to infotainment system. So we're trying to get there. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Most of the security research that is being done is being presented inside the security, the security community or the security echo chamber. So this is why events such as hardware.io is a, are very, are a very good platform for security researchers to mix and to mingle with uh, hardware engineers and embedded engineers. Well, to be honest, uh, I hope to get in touch with some more uh, hardware engineers at hardware.io, maybe share a few ideas, uh, show them uh, some of my ideas, some of my slides when it comes to uh, teaching non-security people uh, secure ways of coding. Because right now, when you're a developer, they just teach you in schools how to, why you should be avoiding a, a buffer overflow from the point of view of a project manager, because that introduces bugs in your system and your software will crash and you won't deliver, but it doesn't show the point of an attacker when you basically are missing out an overflow or a null pointer or anything like that, that's when you're leaving a door open for a malicious actor. So we're trying to, slowly get in touch with the hardware industry and uh, promote a security agenda. The, the short version of that is that we want to have fun and uh, make the world a safer place. <laughs>